This is Tom Cold Export, and in this video, we will be benchmarking Battlefield 2042 to see if its minimum and recommended specs makes any sense. As you may have seen, the minimum requirements for running Battlefield 2042 uh, on the CPU side is an Intel i5 6600K, which is a 4 core four thread CPU, and the AMD Ryzen R5 3600, which is a 6 core 12 thread CPU. And uh, this seems like a bit of a mismatch because the 3600 is uh, quite a bit more powerful than the 6600X, uh, 6600K. But uh, yeah, we will have to benchmark it and see if it makes any sense. Uh, I think that the R5 1600 would be a more comparable processor, but uh, the people over at DICE probably feels differently. On the GPU side we have an RX 560 or a GTX 1050 Ti. Now I don't have any of those uh, GPUs so I have not been able to test them. Uh, I, the closest thing I got is the R9 290 but that's not uh, officially supported by AMD anymore so it doesn't receive driver updates and you have to have the 21.9 driver to run the BF2042 beta so that's not possible. I also have a laptop with a GTX 10 54 gig uh, uh, GPU, so I have tested that along with the 66 on the K that's in that same laptop to see if you can run it on uh, such low end hardware. On the recommended side, you have the Ryzen R7 2700X and the Intel i7 4790. And that also seems like a bit of a mismatch because the i7-4790, that's quite an old CPU running on the DDR3 memory and it's not even overclockable. While the R7-2700X, that's an 8-core 16-threaded, relatively new CPU, that uh, that's, has a lot more processing power. But it's of course possible that this game is not able to, uh, to take advantage of all those cores and threads, so we will have to see that in our benchmarks a bit later on. Also the weird thing here is that the, traditionally, in my previous testing, the R5 3600 is usually faster than the 2700X. So it seems a bit weird that the 2700X is the recommended SKU and the R5 3600 is the minimum SKU. So uh, on the graphics card side, the recommended is the 6600 XT or the RTX 3060. So for the minimum uh, system specifications, my test system were as follows. The Intel Core i5-6600K running at stock, no uh, enhanced turbo or multi-core enhancement, none of that, just stock performance. I also tested the AMD Ryzen R5-3600, also at stock performance, uh, both of these were with the Coolmaster Hyper 2 and 2 EVO, mm -hmm. uh, Black Edition, sorry. The R5-3600 was also running at stock, and in addition to that I also tested the R5-1600 because I feel like that's a probably a more comparable CPU to the 6600K instead of the 3600. Uh, but all of these CPUs were running with 2 by 4 gigabytes of memory, so 8 gigabytes in total, running at 3000 megahertz with fairly loose timings, like 15, 17, 17 or something like that. So not very fast memory and uh, only 8 gigabytes of it. Also I used the MSI Gaming X GTX 1070. I used 1080p only for this test and only medium settings with the GTX 1070. On the recommended system specs I used the AMD Ryzen R5, uh, R7 2700X along with uh, RTX 3060 and 16GB of 32 MHz uh, CL16 memory, so fairly regular slow memory. Uh, I also used an i5 10600K to stand in for the i7 4790, which I don't have. So the 10600K had only four cores enabled with hyper threading, uh, and they were all running at 3.8 gigahertz. Even so, we're, it probably performs a bit better than an i7 4790. So performance will probably be a bit uh, above what you will actually see with the uh, 4th gen i7. Uh, because it's running at DDR3 memory instead of DDR4. I run DDR4, I didn't downclock it or anything, so yeah, that's also something to keep in mind. And for those specs, I use 1080p high settings. I didn't test uh, other, anything else than 1080p, I didn't test 1440p yet, I haven't been able to get around to that. And also, the Origin software locks you out after you have tested like three configurations, I think you can log in on, and then you are locked out for 24 hours, which is annoying what you're trying to benchmark. I think I used three different accounts uh, on, only for, well I did test a bit more than uh, these numbers you see here, but three different accounts for these numbers. 
So let's first see how the laptop fared with the GTX 1050 and the 6600K. Low settings at 1080p yielded as an unplayable experience with an average frame rate of 35 frames per second and 1% and 0.1% lows way, way below that. The stutters were frequent and made the game unplayable in my opinion, and it was a fairly balanced configuration though with both CPU and GPU running at full tilt, but I would not uh, like to be playing the game this way. So instead let's move on to the GTX 1070 testing. With the GTX 1070 I could move up to medium settings, and starting off with the 6600K and the R5 3600, we see two very different results, which basically was what we expected. So the minimum specs are missing the mark here. The R5 3600 delivers 22% better average frame rate, and frame times, while still poor, is much better than uh, the 6600K. With the 1600 we see performance that is much closer to the 6600K, although even the 1600 delivers much better experience than the 4-core 6600K. So out of curiosity I overclocked the 1600 to 3.8GHz and installed another 8GB of RAM for a total of 16GB and this brought us another 16% more performance. I did the same for the 6600K which is now running at 4.5GHz at 25% increase in clock speed and interestingly we saw a 25% increase in average FPS as well. This is probably due to the fact that the CPU was and still is pegged at 100% throughout our benchmark. There is still the occasional stutter though, which is evident by a 0.1% low and you're not going to be able to do anything else other than playing the game, so you won't be able to do a voice chat on Discord or watch a YouTube video on the side, you will only be playing the game. Now let's move on to the recommended settings. Here I again up the quality to high settings with the RTX 3060. With the R7 2700X we achieved similar performance to the R5 3600 with the 1070 and medium settings, even though not comparable the R5 3600 had slightly better frame times. The 4-core 8-thread 10600K delivered 15% better average frame rate than the 2700X and also delivered better 1% low. The 0.1% low is slightly worse though, so there might be a bit more stutter here and uh, that is probably due to the fact that the 4-core 8-thread 10600K even though it delivered a better gaming experience, it had to work a lot harder, so utilization hovered between 85-95%, to which leaves very little left over for other tasks such as chatting on Discord or watching a YouTube or Twitch stream. It's likely that an actual 4790 with DDR3 memory and an RTX 360 is going to be maxed out during gameplay, and probably deliver slightly worse experience, and the experience will probably be slightly more comparable to the overclocked 6600K. It's not unlikely that it is fairly close to the 2700X, the 4790 that is. So the recommended settings probably make sense. Now I have one more benchmark to show you and that is the 6600 XT versus the RTX 3060. For this test I used the 10600K at 4.9GHz with 16GB of 3730MHz memory at 1515-1530. Yes, I know this is PCIe 3.0, not 4.0. Even so, I do believe these numbers will be representative even for PCIe 4.0. At 1080p ultra settings, the 6600 XT is 9% faster for the average frame rate and has much better frame times. And this also remains true at 1440p as well, although the 6600 XT is now only 7% ahead. But again, those frame times are a lot better. At 3440 by 1440, uh, the 6600 XT and the 3060 performs on par with each other, and neither is able to maintain 60 frames per second on average. There is currently no ray tracing in the game, nor is there DLSS support, which is why none of those numbers are included. And there seems to still be quite a bit of optimization left to do, so I'm not sure they are going to be able to do this before the November launch, but fingers crossed, I guess. So for the conclusion then, you will see better performance with an Intel CPU, probably due to the lower latency of the architecture uh, than you will with the Ryzen CPU it seems. Uh, I haven't tested the 4th gen Ryzen yet, so I will get to that and we will see that in the next video along with some GPU benchmarks. But uh, yeah, for now at least it seems like you are best off running an Intel CPU with an AMD GPU because those actually had better frame times than the Nvidia GPUs. And uh, yeah, uh, my personal opinion of Battlefield 2042 is that it's... I had fun, but uh, it seems to be a bit unpolished. 
and I'm a bit skeptical whether they are going to be able to launch this title next month, November, because it's, it seems to be a lot of work still, and yeah, a bit skeptical about that, but we will we'll see. Thank you so much for watching, and check back later for more CPU and GPU benchmarks of Battlefield 2042.